In this interactive brokers tutorial, I'll show you how to use the web portal on desktop to research, purchase and sell assets on interactive brokers. And also I'll cover a few important sections that you will need on your investing journey. <laughs> Hello finance people. My name is Robert and I'm here to share my learnings and experiences about personal finance as a European. So once you've gone through the sign up process with all the documents and so on, you'll land on this page. So if you haven't signed up yet, go to this link or click on the first link in the description and sign up there because that way you will also support my channel without any extra cost to you. So I appreciate if you can do that. So once you sign up, basically you land on this dashboard page and you probably don't have anything here, but I have one ETF, so it shows uh, some graphs here. But probably when you start out, you kind of want to deposit money first because you want to start investing. So you can deposit from here. You can always come to transfer and pay. And then from here, you see transfer funds. Now you have options to deposit money or withdraw it or just transfer funds between uh, interactive broker accounts. We're going to deposit some money. So if I select that one, you can see I have two options here, but actually let's create a new one. I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, this depends a little bit on your currency and the country you're in, but basically I have two options. I have the bank transfer and I have uh, transfer from wise balance. I'm going to do the bank transfer. The time I did it, it worked in an hour or so. So let's get the instructions. So here they kind of give you the steps, what you need to do, but basically we need to give the name of the institution. So in my case, it's ING bank. BV or something like this. This is not the real one. So check your bank's details. Then you need to give your account number. It's usually start with something like NL uh, for Netherlands and so on. There's some numbers. You just add the IBAN number here. And then this is the account uh, nickname. So later on you can find it. Then just tell them how much you want to deposit. Let's say I want to deposit 2000. And the cool thing is now in interactive brokers, you can uh, do recurring transactions. I'm going to dive into this a bit later, but it's an option and it's a really welcome feature. Okay. Once you're done here, let's click on get transfer instructions. And here you have the details. For most of you, if you're in Europe, you probably just need the name of the beneficiary and also the uh, IBAN number. So this is this number of the bank account in Germany that uh, interactive brokers have. If you need, here's the SWIFT code. And this is the beneficiary bank, just in case your bank requires that. So you can enter that. And then super important, you need to add basically your account number to the payment reference when you're making the payment. This way, Interactive Brokers is able to connect your account with the money you're sending. So once you're ready, once you've uh, taken all of the, this information in, and use your online banking to send the money, you can just click here on finish. And that's pretty much it. If I go back to de make deposits, you can see that I have the bank account here. It's saved it. And now it's expecting some money to come to this account. As mentioned, it took me maybe an hour and then I could already see my deposit. But this might depend on your country, on your bank and st stuff like that. So it, sh it shouldn't take too long though. Let's press on home. Okay, let's say now the money arrived, you're ready to buy an asset. Now, before we do that, let me show you one setting that will reduce your fees a little bit for most of you, at least. So what you need to do is come here uh, where your name is, tap on that and tap on settings. And this way you basically manage all your settings. If you scroll down, you have this uh, pricing plan. So if you tap, uh, if you click on that, you get to choose what type of pricing structure you use, fixed or tiered. Now, in most cases, it will be cheaper for you to use the tiered one especially if you're trading 5,000 and less. So every trade is less than 5,000 euros, then this is probably better for you. And I'm not going to get into the details. There's a great video by Angelo Colombo. I'm going to link it in the description if you're interested to find out more. But basically there he breaks down why this is the case. But I would just select the tiered one and click on continue. So now that we have that settled, let's go back to home and we are ready now to search for a stock. Let's say we're interested in Tesla stock. It's always a hot topic. I'm going to type in here Tesla in the search box. And then let's uh, click on more results. And you can see, whoa, that's a lot of options for Tesla. Look at that. That's much more than I thought, right? What's the difference? So you have here Tesla Nasdaq. That just means this Tesla stock is sold on Nasdaq in New York. That's basically a, a stock exchange. There are other ones that are sold in Europe, for example, 
Yeah, at the bottom you have this uh, test, other Tesla with TL0 or O, I don't, I'm not sure which one is it, which is sold uh, in Frankfurt in Germany. So that's just another exchange. Now the difference between the two is that this one in Europe is sold in euros. Because our account is in euros, it's quite uh, beneficial to actually buy the stock also with euros because you don't have the conversion fees. But you can also buy the original stock on NASDAQ in dollars. But you just need to convert your euros to uh, dollars. And there's some fees involved with that. Now, the other options here, you can see that there's these leverage options, 3x, 2x, and so on. This is basically your borrowing kind of money and your money becomes more. So let's say that three times leverage just means there's 1,000 of your money and 2,000 of borrowed money. And when you together you have 3,000 euros to spend and this is great when the stock is going up you're gonna make a triple the profit but there's a big risk if the uh, stock starts going down it's triple the loss so we are always trying to minimize the losses so that's why uh, using leverage is very risky so if you're starting out I would just avoid that but for later on if you're you feel comfortable you want to take big risks then you can go with the leverage positions now there's somewhere also a Tesla stock in Mexico. I can't find it right now, but there is an option also to buy in other countries than just Europe or in USA. Now let's say we're interested in the European one. So I'm going to click on this below this number. You have the stock. I'm going to tap on it. And now here we are on the asset page. This is basically the Tesla. And you can see that this is sold in Germany because there's a little German flag here. If you tap on it, you'll, you'll know more details about it. So this is the price it's selling right now. And this is the candlestick uh, graph. You can change a lot of things in the graph if you're interested. So for example, if you don't like the candlesticks, you can also tap on this one and have like a line chart here. And uh, if you're not happy uh, here, for example, we can take a look at six month period. So one day is not really telling. So that's why six months, three months, you can take a look where we are standing right now. Now you can play around with the graph but what's interesting here is that you have more in information. Uh, sorry, it's here on the right. So you have the quote. This is the information about the company itself, but you also have the fundamentals. Just means it's going to show more information about the company. You can research the company. You can see here there, there's an overview. There's information about dividends, which Tesla doesn't uh, pay out. That's why you don't see anything here. And you see other ratings. And there's a lot of things you can actually take a look. So for example, here, ownership. If you're interested in who's owning this, we know it, it's a big part Elon Musk, but uh, who else is, is an owner, you see? There's just more information that could be useful in deciding if you want to invest into this or not. Now, we also have news here. This news will be only about Tesla. So again, if you're researching, this is a great place to come and take a look what's going on with the stock. You see news, research reports, and market commentary. So it's quite extensive and you can deep dive into this if you want to. But let's go back to the quote. There's also a few more options. So here you have the watch list, this little icon. You can add this to your watch list. If you tap on it, now you can select either new watch list or favorites. I'm going to save it there. Then you have the pricing alert, which basically just means where you can set a threshold. When it reaches that threshold, then it will send you an alert. So if you're looking for a big drop in Tesla, and you want to wait until it's 200 and then get a notification. That's how you would do it. Do you find this video helpful so far? Then give it a thumbs up so I know you like this type of videos. But most of you just want to buy a stock or an ETF or any asset. So how do you buy? Well, there's a big buy button. So let's try it with that one. And then you have here basically the order ticket. From here, you have make sure you're in the buy order. You're not selling it. You have the quantity. Now 100 is quite a lot with this price. Uh, so let's say you want to buy. You could buy also 10 stocks. Then it will be around 2,000 euros or so. Okay, but if you have certain amount, let's say you have a thousand euros, how, how do you actually buy them? Well, you can set from here, just tap on the euro, and you can see that now the quantity is actually in euros. So let's say if you have 1,000 euros, then you just type it in here. And then for uh, the order type, there are many options, but I'm going to show you the two most popular. You have the market. Market is the simplest way to make an order. You basically say that I want to buy with thousand euros, and then it's going to execute with the price that is currently on the market. Now it's somewhere, it's going to be roughly this amount. It won't be exactly always, but it'll be roughly that amount. It just executed directly. The other option is to limit your order. In this case, you can say, hey, 
when the price is 230 then execute the order it doesn't mean it's gonna uh, buy it for 230 but as soon as the price goes below this 230 threshold it's gonna execute the order but if the uh, uh, stock's still uh, dropping and dropping you might buy it for less or if it's just like a bounce then you might buy it for a bit more but that's just details so let's say if i want to buy it at 230 and now i can tell well how long is this order active it can be active for one day and remember this day it, it just depends how is this stock exchange open then you have the option to good till cancelled and it's it is what it sounds like it's gonna get cancelled only once you cancel it so it'll just wait in your account until it's cancelled so you can uh, leave it there and then you have the at the opening which just means uh, the next trading day you will take a look at the opening time you'll take a look okay is the price 230 if yes then uh, buy it if no then it's just going to cancel the order so the most popular ones are day or good to, till cancel so in this case i'm just going to choose the good till cancel and now we are ready to buy this one if you want to now one thing i didn't mention just now you can see that here we have 1000 uh, euros but we get actually 4.34 shares and this uh, means they're fractional shares. You're not being, uh, buying a share at a time. You're actually buying a share and a half. And usually that wasn't possible, but now Interactive Brokers added this feature. So you're able to buy uh, smaller amounts of shares than you can buy now shares with decimal numbers. But let's say I just want to buy uh, 10 shares. I like to keep it very simple. And this is how much it would cost me. And now before actually buying it, you have the profit taker and stop loss now this is a bit more advanced but i think you might be using stop loss at some point this is basically you telling that if the price drops too much let's say it hits 200 then i want to sell this stock and from here you could just enable that you see stop loss price and so on and again time to force today or good till cancel they would probably would do that now we're not going to go there right now and before submitting buy order you can also preview it so if i click on preview right now it's complaining because i don't have enough funds to buy this but here you would see what are you buying the commissions usually it's about three euros if you're buying from european exchange and then the total amount so you can see it just lists out everything here and then you click on transmit order it will try to execute the order but in my case it's just not working because i don't have the funds all right let's go back i'm going to cancel this one and let's go home so this is the portfolio let's say you bought i bought this etf and now i'm happy with it okay i'm happy with the profits i want to basically sell this for profit how do you do that well the easiest way is to come to your portfolio if you tap here and then you can see i only have one uh, asset in my portfolio but if i click on it you can see it's the same kind of an asset page here. It's on the Dutch market. But now I have this additional section here, your position. This is how much my market value for this ETF is. And basically the daily uh, profit or loss is uh, 9 euros profit today. And unrealized profit, that means profit for the whole time duration is about 100 euros. But in any case, we I'm ready to get rid of this now. What we could do here is if we click on the sell. Remember, I have 52 shares here. Click on sell. Now I could say, okay, I want to sell 52 shares. You, you see it's selected. I'm going to do just do it market order. And now I'm going to enforce it day. Yeah. So if I would now click on submit sell order, it would just try to execute the order by with market uh, price. But let's preview it. From here, you can see that, again, you have the preview. The summary what's going to happen this is what you're buying this uh, no this is what you're selling and basically here's the commissions and in total you're going to get this much in your cash balance so there's some more information here so always just check the preview that you're happy with everything that's going on there and now if i would uh, click on transmit order it would just execute the order but i don't want that i want to keep this etf but this is how you would actually sell your stock so let's uh i'm just going to cancel this Oh yeah, and just keep in mind that when you're buying stocks or assets on the exchanges, they have opening hours. So, for example, if you're buying for US, they are open, you know, local time. And if you're buying from Amsterdam or in Europe, then they have their own time. So you can check online what those times are for different exchanges. 
but it doesn't mean that the order will execute immediately. If you buy it on Saturday, you'll wait until next Monday morning to just execute it. Cool feature that actually uh, interactive brokers have brought uh, recently is the recurring uh, investments and they are promoting it everywhere right now. And this is quite novel feature right now in Europe. You don't have many platforms that offer this. And for most individual traders, dollar cost average trading will yield the best results. So basically you invest a certain amount every month, no matter the market situation. It's going up or down, you still invest the same amount. If you want to know how to set up recurring investments in interactive brokers, then click on this video banner here. We took a look at portfolio, but in trade also you have a few options here. The most interesting is uh, the convert uh, currency. Basically here you can convert to other currencies if you need to. If you're buying from other markets and you want to buy it in local currency, then you can do it here. Then you have the research. Uh, this is where you would research all your stocks that you want to buy. And this is where you also have watch list. This is quite useful if you're trying to keep up with certain stocks, but you haven't bought yet. So I would just add them here and you can keep track of them here. Then you have the transfer and pay. And one cool thing you need to know here is that you can actually transfer positions. So let's say you are fed up with interactive brokers. You can also transfer your uh, stock directly to another broker like the Jiro or eToro. The same thing applies if you already have um, a stock bought from another broker, you can also transfer it to the interactive brokers. This just gives us flexibility later on if we're not happy either with interactive brokers or the other way around, you already have some money in another broker and you wanna just uh, move all your money here. Then we have the performance and reports. And here, to be honest, the most useful is the statements. So here you're able to uh, generate reports and it's useful sometimes to take a look what kind of fees they charge and things like that. For example, if you click on this arrow here next to activity, you can now generate a year to date report and it's gonna be in English. I'm gonna just use it HTML. So now I view it, it's gonna report, uh, just generate it. And from here, you can take a look how's your, what you've been up to. And some of these uh, reports actually include also uh, the commission. So for example, here I have a commission um, then if you look at trades, here you can see that I made this trade for ETF. This was like a month ago. And here you have the commission for that specific trade. This is just useful at the end of the year, for example, just take a look how much in fees you pay here and if everything is how you, you expect it to be. Now, quickly, I know a lot of you like the dark mode or dark theme. So here, if you tap on your name here, you can see light and dark. And if you select dark, it will change it to the dark mode. But personally, I prefer the light one. And since we're here, let's take a look at some settings here as well. I just want to show you, we already took a look at the uh, pricing plan, but if you scroll down, you also have this option here, base currency. Now, this is important. If, for example, you're going to mainly trade in US dollars, then it would definitely change the currency to US dollars. And I would actually just send dollars to this account to interactive brokers instead of using uh, euros and then converting them and things like that. Because there is some fees with uh, when you convert money on interactive brokers. But you can change it at any point here to anything else. So just keep that in mind and it's easy to do. So the first rule of investing, according to Warren Buffett, is to avoid losses. That's why you should watch this video next, where I'll share the best long-term investment strategies for individual investors like you and me, so that you can mitigate the risk.